Hello everyone, greetings, grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Alex with Sound Words, pastor at Sound Words Bible Church here in Franklin, Tennessee. Appreciate you tuning in. I've been asked quite a few times where I got my Bible and what kind of tools and systems I use whenever I'm studying, so I thought it might be worthwhile to make this quick video. Now to be clear, I've purchased every single one of these items in this video. I'm not sponsored by any of them. And the most expensive item that you're probably going to find is going to be the actual Bible that I use itself. It comes in at right around the $60 mark. Proverbs 23, 23 tells us to buy the truth and sell it not. So for me, this is just a no brainer as this is the book that prepares me not only for everyday life, but for eternity. To make things easy for you, I will put the links to each item in the description below. Now, if money is an issue for you, we will go over a free section that will basically cover all of your bases electronically. Just bear in mind, electronics die, and there was one time we had a Bible study, and a guy brought his tablet. I called on him to read a Bible verse, and his tablet was dead. So, don't be that guy. Now, with that said, here are my five basic Bible study tools and best practices. Number one thing you're going to need is obviously a holy Bible. Now, I got my Bible through localchurchbiblepublishers.com. If you search 400, you will be able to look at their mid-size note takers. And they have a couple different color options for you to choose from. I went with the One Piece Executive. So here you have it, Authorized King James Bible. Feels pretty good. It's got little notches here on the side, great quality leather. I am planning on passing this down to my children one day, so I'm pretty confident that it will stand the test of time. Uh, one of the things I love about it is that there is no footnotes uh, or cross-references here at all. It just, it's just purely the Word of God, and it leaves great space here for me to kind of make my own notes and um, cross-references. So... Real big perk for me, and I don't have any commentaries coming in on it. It's just me and my own personal studies. All right, number two is going to be the Noah Webster's 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language. It's pretty much the Bible of the English language. So anytime I come across a word that I don't understand, well, I'm opening up this book and going through it to understand what that word means. Pretty straightforward. So you can search this thing on Amazon. Uh, retail, I guess, has it right around 58 bucks. I'm a big fan of buying things used. I've seen them go for anywhere from 40 bucks, 38, 40 bucks. Uh, definitely worth uh, the investment in my mind. All right, the number three item I use are these Micron pens. These are the Pigma Micron 01 Arcveal ink pens. You can find them on Amazon for about $10. Now I have a lot of friends that use colored pencils. I prefer these pens because they basically do not bleed through the pages of your Bible, which leads me to my next point, ditch the highlighters. And the reason why is it wasn't until I had a faithful man of God tell me your highlighters bleed through your pages of your Bible. And that's one thing that I wish I would have stopped a long time ago. Now with that, we're gonna start sharing a little bit of best practices. Uh, this is something that I've been asked a lot about. I do have a color coding system and I keep it pretty simple. I use black to underline and bold certain words or phrases. And just a pro tip, I guess you'd call, I like using like a a plastic card or ruler so that my lines are really clean and straight. I use blue for underlining words, phrases uh, that are pertaining to the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, the house of Israel. I use the color green to underline and highlight anything pertaining to Gentiles, all nations, and I use red to underline, scratch out uh, what a lot of the modern translations do when they remove words, phrases, or even change the wording. All right, so kind of seeing this in action, I'm in Ezekiel 36. You can see where I've boldened certain words, underlined using the credit card or ruler that I had available at the time. Blue, highlighting uh, the fact that that is Israel, green for the Gentiles. And now you're going to start seeing red, where I've literally crossed out the phrases, words. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see a little bit better. 
and uh, in this case a verse with that ruler or credit card to go directly straight to the words that the NIV, ESV, NLT have completely removed uh, from their books. And I like to strike down on words uh, that I know, and I'm still learning this today, guys. I like to strike down words where I know that they've watered it down. So rather than believing on, their, they change it, I believe, to believe in. There's a difference between believing on and believing in, but that will save for another day. Which leads me to number four, websites. Now I've got three that I wanna share with you. One is the new eye-opener uh, study. It's on BibleBelievers.com, I'll send you the link. But basically, it's a study that shows you 200 places of the 6,000 that a lot of the modern translations have modified from the Texas Receptus. And I kind of went through this thing. It took me about seven to eight hours. And once I confirmed, I literally went through it. Uh, I, that's how I scratched out the ones where I could take it to the bank that they changed it. And they did it more, they did it, they compared it to a ton of translations, but like I said, I only focused on those three. So it's a great study. Another website that I really appreciate is avpublications.com. Under their downloads tab, they have three tracks that have been really beneficial to my studies, same like the eye opener. And it's their New Age Bible Versions track, their New King James Omissions track, and in all of thy word track. Definitely recommend you checking those out and doing the same thing like you did with the previous study. Another website that's really great is ForgottenTruths.com. They have an ocean of information, so I strongly recommend you take a minute to go through all their tracks, booklets, books, and materials uh, that can really help you better understand the Holy Scriptures. And last but not least, point number five, free apps. This is my home screen. The beauty of it is everything that we've discussed so far in this video, if you have a smartphone or tablet, you can download these apps for free. And we will kind of break down what each one is and its purpose. Up is going to be the Takarta KJV Bible app. This is the one I basically use for word studies and everyday use. The app is pretty intuitive itself. You've got the wheel up top that allows you to select whatever book you want to go to and whatever chapter and verse. You can swap between the Old Testament, New Testament, or the all the Bible. Um, and the nice thing about it is say you're on the road and you just, you can't read, maybe you're traveling a lot. If you just hit the play button at the bottom and begin with verse one, you've got someone that will basically now read the whole entire the chapter for you. So it's Romans. a really great tool. Romans one. The next app I use is the Holy Bible app. And this is the app that I use to compare all the Bible translations. The beauty of it is you can select all the translations that you want to compare and it'll show you what each one says. So here I am in Matthew 18, verse 11. All I got to do is I select the verse, hit compare, and it'll show you right then and there. I've already selected a bunch. But the KJV says, For the Son of Man come to save that which is lost. ESV, NIV, and LT have completely removed this verse. Uh, NASB, AMP have put them in parentheses, and you can kind of see what all these other translations are doing. A lot of them just completely remove it out of their books. Another app worth mentioning is the Blue Letter Bible app. If you just search BLB, you'll be able to find it. Unfortunately for me, lately this has not been working, but Typically when I've used this app, I've used it for the interlinear concordance to go look at the Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. I used to do that a lot. I pretty much don't do that anymore, but thought it was worth just pointing out. I don't know if there's just an update that they need to push through. And another point to that I should probably add is I have no idea if these apps are available on any non-Apple devices. So you guys are gonna have to let me know about that. And last but not least, you have the 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary. It's wonderful because you have that beautiful book right there at your fingertips. So let's say you're in your Bible app, you're reading, you come across the word reprobate and you have no earthly idea what it means. That's how I was when I first read it. Reprobate, one, not enduring proof of trial, not of standard purity or fineness, disallowed, rejected, abandoned in sin, lost to virtue or grace, abandoned to error or in apostasy. So there you have it. Now I know what that word means. And guess what? I don't think you want to be one of those. That's it for now. I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of the tools and websites that you've used that have helped you tremendously in your understanding of God's word? If you're seeing the value in what we're doing here, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.